Welcome back, students. Mr. McCoy here. So let's get a little bit more complicated, and by a little bit more complicated, I mean a lot more complicated with our looping. Uh, just like with if statements, you could place if statements inside of if statements, and then they become nested if statements. Well, we can take loops, and we can put them inside of other loops, and that can get very confusing. A nested loop, just like any other time we've said nested in this class, just means that we're putting something inside of our loop and when we put a loop in a loop then we have nested loops. The tricky thing is that trying to trace through it and realizing that whenever you encounter a loop it's going to run multiple times, right? But then if you see a loop within that loop that loop has to run multiple times each time the outer loop is running. So I'm going to use the uh, terms like inner loop and outer loop uh, like in this example we have this while loop up here, it's the outer one. And then we have this while loop right here, it's on the inside, so that's the inner loop. And looking at this code, it can be very difficult to try to figure out what's going to happen. So um, the best way for me to show you how this works is to actually do it in BlueJ, and at the same time I'm going to be showing you how to trace through your program, because uh, a lot of people have been asking questions, you know, why isn't my program working? And if you really just if you learn how to use that debugger, you're going to be able to find your own mistakes without relying on me so much. So I'm going to show you using the debugger exactly how this loop works so that we can see what's happening. Okay, so I've got my notes over here, and over here I have BlueJ open. And I have a similar program written out over here to what's over here. Actually, I just copy-pasted this over here, but then I deconstructed it. I took this outer loop while i is greater than 2 and I put that right here and then the inner loop rather than putting it inside of this one I put it down here as a separate loop so right now what we have is two loops that are not nested I've got this while loop and then it follows up with this while loop and uh, so let's take a look and see what this is doing so usually when I trace through my programs I will use a piece of paper and keep track of my variables. So this i over here starts at 0, so let me write that down. And then this loop is going to run while i is less than 2. So is i less than 2? Yes it is, so we go inside and i increments, so i becomes 1. And then we go up to the top while i is less than 2, is it less than 2? Yes it is, so we go inside and i increments and it becomes 2. And we go back up here, is i less than 2? No, it's not, so now we're done with that loop. We go down here, we set j equal to 0. And we run through this loop while j is less than 3. Yes, it is, so let's print high. So our output is going to have high and a space. j increments. Go back up. Uh, j is less than 3, yes, so we do high again, the space, j increments, back up, it's still less than 3, so we do it again, high, space, increments, no longer less than 3, so now we're done. So that's tracing it through with paper. Let me show you how you could do the same thing using the debugger tool. I'm going to set a breakpoint up here at the start of my program. Wherever I put this breakpoint is where my debugger is going to start. De well, it'll run the program from the beginning of the program, and it'll stop whenever it gets to the stop sign. So I put the stop sign up here at the beginning because I want to trace through the entire thing. Now let's run the program, and our debugger tools come up, and you can see local variables right now we don't have any don't worry about this string args that's just what we pass into the main method so that'll be there but ignore it and we see the yellow line showing us what line of code that we're on if we hit step you see that that, lo that line of code ran we now have an i stored in memory with a value of zero just like we did here we wrote i with a zero we hit step again we're now inside of a while loop i is about to increment so i became one then i became two and whenever i was 2, we left 
we didn't do anything else with this loop. So you can see I changed value just like we expected it to. Now we're down here at this loop, the J loop is what I'll call it. J gets declared as zero. Zero is less than three, so it goes inside. It's going to run this print statement. There it is, my terminal window just popped up. J increments, so we can watch that happen as soon as I hit step. You see that it goes up. And then this process repeats where J keeps increasing. High gets printed to the screen. And we can see that our expectation of what was happening in the program matched what happened here. Whenever we were done running the program, we had printed high, high, high. I has a value of 2 and J has a value of 3. So that's how you can use the debugger to do very similar things to actually mapping it out on paper. Now let me clear all this stuff out. And we're going to do this again, but this time I'm going to take this entire loop, all three parts of the loop. The, remember the three parts of a while loop. You initialize a variable, you set up your while loop, and then somewhere inside of it you increment that variable. So I'm going to take this entire loop, I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to paste it inside of this one right here. You notice how that first loop did absolutely nothing? Well, I'm going to put that in there, do my control shift I to make the alignment look nice. So now here's that loop that I just put on the inside. It's now my inner loop. And now every time this outer loop runs, it has to do this inner loop three times. Remember this one ran three times? So if you watch my mouse pointer, you'll see the flow of the program is going to go like this. One, two, three. Here's outer loop two, one, two, three, and then it'll be done because the outer loop runs twice. Now let's uh, compile this, set up a breakpoint up here at the top. This time I'm going to do the uh, paper tracing the same time I do the debugger tracing. Let's run the code. All right, it stopped right here. Step into and we see that i is equal to zero. i is zero. So i was less than 2, so we went on the inside. Now j is equal to 0. We can see j appear there. Let me keep track of it over here also. All right, we step in. j was less than 3, so it went on the inside of this while loop. It's now going to print high and a space. See our terminal window up there? I'm not going to write out high and space because we can see the terminal window easy enough. j now increments. See it up, change up here. I'll change it on my paper. Step into again. We print high again. J increments. So J became 2. So notice, we haven't ever gone back up here. This first while loop is still in its first run. I hasn't changed at all. We haven't gotten down to this code. We are currently stuck inside of this loop. High is going to print a third time, and then J is going to increment. So now our value of J is at 3, and 3 is not less than 3, so this while loop is done. So watch what happens now. It leaves that while loop, and now we get to finish our very first run of this outer while loop. So now finally we got to this I increments. I goes up to 1. and then we've reached the end of our loop and we go back up here is i less than two yeah it is it's one so now we're going to run this outer while loop again j resets to zero we go inside we're going to print high again look now we got another high up here J increments, J become 1. And we're going to run this inner loop an additional three times. So by the time we got through with running this three times, our J, as you saw it in here, counted up to 2, and then it counted up to 3, just like it did before. Printed out an additional three highs. Then finally, this was done, and I incremented. Now we're down here. We check to see if i is less than 2. It's not, and now our loop is done. Let's break it down. What happened here? We have a while loop that is supposed to run three times. 
we put that inside of a while loop that runs two times. Three times two is six. We got high printed six times. What if you wanted them on separate lines? So how about we print high and then we print high and then we print high and then after we've finished this while loop maybe we want to go down to the next lines. So right here I would say system.out.println and if I put nothing in it it just goes down to the next line. So let's check out what's going to happen whenever I run this now. So what happened here? Our outer loop said we're going to do our first row and that row consisted of three high statements. This loop printed high three times. Then we said, all right, let's go down to the next line and let's repeat again and we produced another row. So if you wanted to produce rows and columns of text, then you could use nested loops and that's what we're going to use just for, for practicing nested loops to start with. A lot of uh, exercises like this. So if we change these values, uh, let me make this um, 5 and let me make that 7 and then run it. I'll bet you can guess what's going to happen. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 highs going across and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 highs going down. The outer loop controlled how many rows we were going to print and the inner loop constructed each row. And then you can start doing crazy stuff like this. Let's say um, let's say we want the while loop on the inside to be ever changing and we want to go from J to I. Check this out. Produced a triangle. Why did that happen? Well, each time my outer loop runs, I gets bigger. So my inner loop is going to go from 0, its starting position is J, it starts at 0 and it goes up until I. But every time it gets to this while loop, uh, the value of I is slightly bigger. So the first time this loop ran, I was 0, J was 0, so it printed nothing. The second time we hit this while loop, J started at 0, but now I is 1, so we got 1 high. The last time we got to this loop, our value of I was 4, because 4 is the last number that's less than 5, and so J was 0 and we ran as long as J was less than 4, and so we get 4. Now there is only one other thing that I need to tell you guys about, and if you look in the notes it's that last slide. Uh, the break statement, you learned that already. But whenever you have nested loops and you put a break statement in, so if I put a break statement right here, this break statement will break me out of the innermost loop. So it is inside of this one. And so that's the while that I'm going to break out of. So as soon as I hit that break statement, I leave that loop. So you can see I'm essentially uh, canceling myself out of this loop as soon as I get here. And so this, would, this is what would happen. After I print that first high, then it immediately breaks out after that. Now if I change with the location of this break, put this break down here, now this break is, go is actually inside of this while statement. Although this while is above it, it's not actually inside of that one. So this break applies to this while, and so now this while loop will run to completion before moving down to this one, but this while loop will now only run once so you get a very different result. We get that first line, this actually doesn't produce anything if I, if I make this higher. Now you can see this occurs exactly once, then we hit to this break and we don't repeat this the five times that we were expecting to. We were expecting to maybe see five rows of highs, but instead we don't because in that first line, as soon as we finished it, we broke out of that loop. So in this lab set, the first couple practice problems look exactly like this, so I'm not going to work them out with you. Um, you could probably come up with the answer on your own just from looking at this example. Then we move into some reviews of Sentinel controlled while loops, and we bring it all together with, uh, with some math with the Hailstone series. So good luck on the labs. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button! Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface, but hey, 
that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.